Feeling thirsty? Order a drink. Give me ten. In this experiment, we tackle the so-called handover problem. How, where, and when should the robot give the object to the human? We use an ACES action sensor to detect and acquire the human posture. This posture is used in turn to place an avatar in a 3D model of the world, reconstructed dynamically by the robot. In the demonstration, we use two items, a green can and the red bottle. Bring me the red bottle. The user talks to the robot through an Android tablet using Google Voice recognition to convert speech to text. Bring me the can. This text is analyzed by a custom software that identifies the actions or questions and extracts the meanings of the words, a process known as grounding of the natural verbal interaction. Here, the robot is asked to fetch a can. Okay, now, where is my object? Okay, I see the object. Let's try to pick it. The robot queries an internal symbolic knowledge base to know where to find the object. Once it gets close to the table, it localizes precisely the object thanks to 2D barcodes and computes a body configuration suited to pick up the can. And now, hand it over to you. In the last step, the robot computes a new motion trajectory to bring and hand over the object to the human. The algorithm samples human positions in the workspace. For each sample, it computes a configuration for handing over with an associated cost that takes into account the human comfort. The robot then chooses the best configuration. The algorithm takes any 3D geometry as input. For instance, if we separate the robot and the human by closing the doors, Bring me the, can. the planner computes a solution that goes through the window. In addition, we introduce a parameter called mobility that lets us tune the computation of costs. When this parameter is low, the planner will consider that the human is reluctant to move and it will try to minimize his displacement effort. On the contrary, when the parameter is higher, the planner balances the effort between the robot and the human. This experiment has been reproduced for a number of configurations, including cases where the human is sitting or not directly reachable by the robot. We are now looking into dynamic replanning, which would allow the robot to track the human and adapt its behavior according to the human's actions.